Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And let's hope for a short recording. <laughs> and this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Season 7, Episode 23, Secrets and Pies. So Swami Chan had a prediction for our thoughts on this episode. <laughs> Pretty right. Pretty right. My favorite points in the episode were Pinkie Pie's expressions. Because I knew exactly where it was going from the beginning of the episode. I'm like, Rainbow Dash doesn't like pies. Yeah, this is going to be... Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, it had its enjoyable parts, like the expressions and some of Pinkie Pie's reactions. But overall, it was a bit rough. And to present the m most nitpickiest of nitpicks, <laughs> not really, a lot of nitpicks for me and Ember. But let's start with Ember. Oh, not really detailed nitpicks. It's the overall concept. You don't like something. You don't want to hurt your feelings, friends, so you lie about it. Then the lie builds up over time until the point that it actually becomes a huge fight where if you had said... Thank you. You know, pie's really not my favorite. I love the flavors you're using. This just isn't my favorite type of dessert. It would have been a minor disappointment and move on. Pinkie Pie would have found out something else you liked and would have been giving you that instead. The entire time. And we could have avoided this whole thing. It's, the problem is it really bothers me when we have these conflicts that were so easily avoidable. And Pinkie Pie makes lots of desserts other than pies. Also, she has those ridiculous files on everyone. How could she truly, in all this time, only just now be figuring out that Rainbow Dash doesn't care for pie? And with observant as Pinkie Pie is, how did she not notice that other people had her pies? And how did she not notice how fake some of Rainbow Dash's Mmm, that was so delicious. I even ate the tin. Yes, because they were all in pie tins. She never noticed that she never got the pie tins back. I mean, some bakeries do deposits on tins. Like, you bring the tins back and they, like, give you a nickel or something. Because that's the one of the things that really bugged me when I was watching. I was like, what about the pie tin? I, I mean, you're tossing away the entire pie and you're not handing a tin back to her. How did Pinkie Pie not pick up on the fact like, I'm not getting any tins back. Is she really eating my pies? Because is she eating them really quickly then throwing away the tin? Because that seems really ridiculous because pie tins are reusable. And on that same note, when she sent the entire pie down to Tank, Tank ate the whole thing, which includes the tin. Yeah. Also, irresponsible pet owner. And that small lesson there that, yes, pets just can't handle pony food. <laughs> yeah. Brings up lots of questions. Also, I need to find out if chocolate's bad for horses. I know it's bad for cats and dogs. They just can't process it. I think it's even toxic. Yes, many things that humans eat are not good for other animal species. That's kind of why humans got them. It's like, nobody else is eating this stuff. <laughs> yeah, for specific reasons. I made myself spicy, so when animals bite into me, they leave me alone, or spit me out, so I can spread my seeds. Humans are just like, this is good, man. And the plant's like, dang it, these humans, what can we do? <laughs> Other than being actually poisonous, not much. Though, I must say, I did like the investigation part of the episode more than I liked the latter half, where Pinkie Pie was trying to get Rainbow Dash to eat her pies. That entire end section, like, did no one notice how crazy Pinkie Pie was going? And I know Pinkie Pie is a little on the edge and everything, but she was more on the edge than normal. So why didn't Rainbow Dash go, something strange is going on here. Why am I suddenly getting way more pies than I usually get? Because I know I get a lot of pies, but this is overworld. She does mention that? Well, she or does say it, you know, like, Pinky, this is kind of getting a little overboard. But I think she only mentioned it about the training. I'm surprised she didn't mention it, like, overall. No, she did. When? At the party where everyone in Equestria had a pie, except Rainbow Dash. Hmm. Don't remember that. I just remember her going, you're not blinking. <laughs> but back to the Rainbow Dash training session that was didn't even happen yet. I think there was a little bit of editing 
oops in there somewhere. Like they recorded a line and used it somewhere where they were going to use it somewhere else. Because when Pinkie Pie is strapped down, she clearly says, get me down from here. She does. And unless she specifically means get me down off the gurney. Which I don't think she meant. Because I think she was actually supposed to still be up in the tree when that line was set. But I think the people who animated the scene didn't quite match that up. So they still had her in the gurney. Yes, but you could still want to get down from the gurney. It just doesn't play as well as still being up in the tree. So I'm thinking that's a little bit of a mistake there. Mm-hmm. And also, she told Pinkie Pie to look out. We knew Pinkie Pie wasn't going to look out and that there was going to be a problem. Spitfire is a good enough flyer to have been able to dodge Pinkie Pie, and Rainbow Dash was right there. Rainbow Dash is fast enough that she could have pushed Pinkie Pie out of the way. In which case, the pie could have fallen to the ground and been ruined that way. Hmm. Though I just remembered the scene just before the pie craziness. Actually, the start of the pie craziness with the evil Rainbow Dash, who looks like she was, like, someone turned off anti-aliasing because she was sharp edges all over the place. And seemed to be missing your cutie mark and had all these jagged edges and sharp pointy teeth. It's like someone's first attempt at drawing and animating a pony. I wonder if they even took, like, their rough models they used to quickly try out animations and just left that in place. Possibly, and really, laser eyes? Yeah. Pinky, I know you're kind of out there, but that's your answer. That something that, as far as I know, ponies don't have is how she's getting rid of your pies. With evil maniacal laughter. That you've never heard. I also like the deeper tone that the voice actress was using. It was really nice. I was like, I can hear a hint of Rainbow Dash in there, but it also sounds like a completely different character. Which makes sense, because that's totally not what Rainbow Dash was doing. No motivation. Oh, this is the worst tasting food in all of Equestria, so I'm going to destroy it and save the world. No, it's that Rainbow Dash doesn't like pie, but she doesn't want to hurt Pinkie Pie's feelings. I mean, it's right in Pinkie's name. But outside of what we're thinking, how do you think they put together the episode? Does it still feel like it flows to you, even with the way we are like, the lesson itself doesn't really work, and how this works? But how does the episode feel? It flows reasonably well, which is kind of its saving grace. It's just ridiculousness all over itself. Pinkie Pie is more observant than that especially when it comes to everyone's personal taste because she knows what everyone likes. You know, that's the whole thing with the party planning cave and what we initially find out, that she pays attention to every pony's likes and dislikes and is then best able to do what pleases them. Mm. How in all of this time did she not notice that she's never seen Rainbow Dash eat pie from anyone because Rainbow Dash says it's not just Pinkie Pies. I don't like pie at all, which means that no matter what desserts are offered to Rainbow Dash, if there's an assortment, she's going to choose anything except pie. Hmm. Hmm. Though my brain goes, hmm, did the writers really go back and make sure Rainbow Dash has never had pie? I'm also thinking about that. I'm trying to go back through my memory. I'm like, that's such a small thing. And I think that may have hinted at that she has had apple pies before because of how Applejack was like, I'm pretty sure I saw her eat one of my pies. So I'm thinking she may have had an apple pie at one point in this series. But she has to have eaten a pie at least once to know that she doesn't like them. Because she says it's not just pinky pies, it's pie in general. Which means she has to have had tried pie at some point. Mm-hmm. Also, I thought that was going to be the thing when that came up was like, she only likes apple pies. And that's what we're going to find out. It's not that she just hates pies overall. She just hates every pie except for apple pie. Oh, and just there were so many other ways that she could have distracted Pinkie Pie and not had to have immediately disposed of the pie. Like, oh, you know, we haven't even had the training session yet. I shouldn't fly on a full stomach. Let me go set this in the mess hall, and we can have it afterwards. Or, I'll take this and store it for later. I'm kind of full right now. Or, you know, stuff like that instead of the elaborate <laughs> Bink! It's not even my birthday! Mm-hmm. 
or everyone's suddenly like, I didn't order a pie. I like how trusting ponies are in their world because suddenly food lands in front of them and they're like, oh, I'm going to eat this. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, this can't possibly be in any way hazardous or dangerous. <laughs> yeah. My first instinct is to like, um, where did this come from? Yeah, it's not like vacuum sealed or anything, so... It, it doesn't look touched, but that doesn't mean that during the baking process... Something didn't happen, and in a world where there are evil sorceresses and sorcerers and stuff... Uh, yeah, are you sure there isn't like a potion or something in there? You know, this isn't like the pie equivalent of a poison apple? Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. But yeah, they were all just very trusting. Like, did any of them, like, really realize where the pies came from? Well, some of them did, because Cheerilee was able to say specifically Rainbow Dash. And the young ponies who stormed Rainbow Dash and Pinkie Pie clearly saw Rainbow Dash holding the pies. So in those two instances, the ponies consuming the pies were able to trace them back to a specific giver. But the Wonderbolts couldn't. They said they got a lot of pie donations, but they didn't know where the pie donations came from. Hmm. I like how forceful Pinkie Pie was to the point where even Spitfire was like, Yes! No! I mean... <laughs> yeah, affirmative. I mean, negative. Are we under investigation? Uh, the Wonderbolt are like so lax on security too. I mean, Pinkie Pie just randomly shows up. Oh, she's Pinkie Pie. I would think she has the ability to circumvent almost all security. I do like the touch of the balloons. It was their way of going, yeah, she doesn't need that spell because balloons. Even though that's totally not how three or four party balloons would work. Also, why not use the hot air balloon? That makes more sense. But then she'd have to stay in the hot air balloon the whole time because unless she still has the spell cast on her that allows her to stand on clouds the way a pegasus does... Though the training field itself looks pretty solid, and considering there's a real tree and everything. Mm -hmm. Well, I think parts of it are solid, but there were also clouds. So what are the parts of the episode you really liked? The ending. You know, the part where the credits were rolling. <laughs> Ooh. So those laughs I heard while you were watching it had nothing to do with Pinkie Pie's expressions or anything. Oh, no, it did have to do with Pinkie Pie's expressions. They were good expressions. Like I said, the episode flowed well. It was just kind of painful because the setup was predictable and felt unnecessary. They've been friends for how long? Neither of them could have come clean at all. I mean, it's kind of a whole gift of the Magi thing. Well, I made you this pie because I wanted you to be happy. Well, I pretended to eat this pie because I wanted you to be happy. Except without the whole satisfaction of the story arc. So yes, parts of it were enjoyable. The animation's really going up, and there were points where, as Lux pointed out, I did laugh. Yeah, I laughed too, and I didn't really have to pause this episode much. No, because even though it was predictable and one of those, really? Do, do we really need this? I said it flowed better, which meant it was more watchable, and... It's just one of those things where, compared to everything else we've seen the series do, the writers do... Yeah, I just realized it's, this felt a lot like the other episodes where we're like, you know, there are simple solutions to this problem. Very simple solutions to the problem. So that's a frustration right there that there were other easier ways to deal with the issue. Even if Rainbow Dash wanted to keep up the facade that she was actually eating the pies, there were simpler ways to deal with it and less and more reasonable, less convoluted ways to keep putting Pinkie Pie off and even coming up with reasons to have not eaten the pies. Like, well, I put it in the fridge because I didn't want it to spoil, but then I went on vacation and totally forgot about it. I'm so sorry it went bad. You're very good at this. It makes me worry. <laughs> what else have you lied about? <laughs> That was a pretty good scene right there. What else have you lied about? Uh, nothing that I can think of right now. <laughs> and Applejack at the end of the episode. I could have told her that. And then, of course, Rainbow Dash immediately being honest and Pinkie Pie immediately not believing her. So did we actually make any progress? Because, okay, we're now saying honesty is the best policy, but Rainbow Dash is being honest and Pinkie Pie is refusing to believe her. Hmm. Which actually probably would have been a better episode for Rainbow Dash to go, you know, 
Pinky, I'd really appreciate it if you would make fewer pies or make me something other than pies. And Pinkie Pie not believing that Rainbow Dash is telling her the truth. Hmm. Maybe we should make a series on how they could have done it better. <laughs> um, I believe there is a YouTube series for that called How It Should Have Ended. And has like all sorts of movies and TV series. Though isn't that more of a comedy one? Kind of like how how it should have ended for Frozen has her going off to the school for the gifted. Xavier's school for the gifted. And how Willy Wonka basically ends right after the scary tunnel. Because what parent still goes on with it after that? Hmm. Didn't see that one. I must go back and watch those when I have mysterious thing called freeze time. So, shall we wrap up our thoughts on the episode? <laughs> as scattered as they've been. Oh, this is how we make them unscattered. We put them all together at the end. So that everyone can skip to your completed image and our final thoughts. <laughs> uh, I shall start. Overall, the lesson was... Okay, but kind of badly handled. The episode flowed well. It had good moments, but it was a lot of like, you could have avoided this. You could have handled this better. Why didn't you tell Pinkie Pie in the first place? I know you didn't want to hurt her feelings, but you would have hurt her feelings, feelings less the time. Yeah. And the best way to phrase it would have been, you know, Pinky, I really appreciate that you made me this pie, but you know what my favorite dessert that you make is? Mm. Yeah, that would have been a better way to phrase it. Yes, because the whole thing is Rainbow Dash hates the pies, but she appreciates Pinkie Pie's effort. So if she compliments the effort, but then says there's something that Pinkie Pie makes that she likes more, she's kind of sidestepping the fact that she hates pie but still gets Pinkie Pie to stop making her pies. Hmm. Well, that's a good place to go into your wrapped up thoughts of the episode. Well, pretty much everything you just said, plus what I just said, you know, it flowed a lot better than previous episodes that kind of fall into this genre slash category. So they're getting better at presenting episodes like this. I just wish they didn't feel the need to present episodes like this. Is we've seen them do episodes that feel so much better, but at the same time, we're two people. Not everyone likes the same things, which is actually something else that's pointed out in the episode, because everyone else eats the pies that Pinkie Pie made. So, yes, not everyone likes the same things, and you can't expect everyone to have identical taste. So, of course, there are going to be some episodes that we enjoy more than others. This mm -hmm. particular episode isn't to our particular taste. That doesn't mean it's bad. It just means that to our particular taste, it's not particularly enjoyable. It's still a perfectly lovely pie. We just don't want to slice. And going back to the point of we're okay with predictable plots in episodes. We've complimented episodes that have very predictable plots. It's just we like the way they're handled, even though we go, yeah, this is how it's going to end. Oh, but they made the trip different. Yeah, as long as you make the journey interesting, I don't care if I know where we're going. And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Season 7, Episode 23, Secrets and Pies. Thank you for listening. Usual YouTuber requests, like, subscribe, share, comment, rewatch, watch other videos. We have playlists. We have Ember's Reading Room, which I have a lot of fun going through all my children's books that have survived over the years and going, wow, I used to read this or wow, I used to read this. If you enjoy Lex's art, you can find more of it on Tumblr, Twitter, DeviantArt, Facebook, Google+, a couple Mastodon servers, Reddit, and wherever else we find to post it online. Really enjoy Lex's art and would like his help making that image in your head a digital reality? Check below for a commission link for pricing and availability. Have a few bits to toss our way, but don't want a custom piece of artwork? Uh, we do have Patreon and Ko-fi accounts. Patreon starts at a dollar, uh, now including monthly sketches, and Coffee works in increments of three. Thank you again for listening.